Okay, friends, so this is the very last video for data wrangling for demos. This is exercise 20, and it's using the Tidyverse package dplyr, which in case you didn't recognize from the lecture videos, I'm not super duper fond of because dplyr essentially is completely redundant with SQL. And I kind of prefer that people learn SQL because SQL is more universal and I actually think it's easier to use, but um, pretty much the functionality of dplyr, everything you can do in SQL as well. So it's sort of like redundant. Um, but R built this and R actually admittingly specifies that this is like so that you don't have to use SQL, which I'm not really sure why he would like not want to use SQL, but um, I've never figured out the mystery of that. But anyways, so exercise 20 works with some of the dplyr functions just to be familiar with them. Um, so you need to load the tidyverse if you haven't already, which takes a while. Um, you don't need to rerun the install, but I typically always leave install in my code because I go and work on different computers and um, it's just handy to have install like just there so that because if you just have the library, then if you just run library, then you're assuming that it's already installed, but it might not be. And then you got to go install it. Anyway. It's just, it doesn't hurt to just have the code there. And then I'm going to use the flights data, which I know um, this is data that's been used in other courses in the program, including um, various things. So it's not like, you know. It's not an unfamiliar data set, but um, I'm sort of cheating because, you know, I don't like to use these sort of big um, data sets that everybody else uses. But the flights data just lends itself really well to this, so I'm going to use it. So glimpse of the flights data, and if you took um, Lavioli's class, you did a lot of this. Um, you know, again, here goes R with all of its little fake warnings. So um, the flights data should be loaded, and I want to do a glimpse of it. And there we go. Okay. So the glimpse of the flight state is here and it literally is flight state. It's like airlines taking off, departure time, schedule departure time. Um, carriers, which are like different airlines. Um, I don't fly very much, so I don't know what all this is. Different airports, airtime. I don't know what that is. Minutes, hours, maybe. Um, how long? I'm assuming distance is like how many miles. I don't know what hour, minute, and time are doing, but it's the flights data. So we have flights data and we're going to play with it. Okay, cool. Um, the first thing we're going to use is the select function. Well, doesn't this sound like SQL? Um, so dplyr has a function called select, which does the same thing that select does in SQL, um, except that the way that you write it in dplyr is you use the select function, and then you write out the fields that you want to select, and then um, they get selected. So this is selecting specific columns from the flights data set, and when I do that, I get this. Um, this over. Okay. Uh, oh, so now I did a heading because it has, I don't know how many um, rows this has. Um, so here's the flights data in terms of head, just the first five rows and what it looks like. Although head actually, I thought it was supposed to be five rows. It seems to be giving six. I don't know. Um, and so I now have an abbreviated data set that doesn't have all of the data in it, just these specific columns in they're actually not in this specific order. Wow, that's weird. Um, oh no, yeah, they are. Year, month, day, yeah, year, month, day, departure time. So they're in this specific order. I don't know what order they were before, but not this order. Yeah. So actually they were in this order before, so it's not really showing you. Oh no, it is, they weren't. Um, the original data was year, month, day, departure time, and then um, scheduled departure time. So this is reordering things with select. Um, if you wrote SQL, you do select um, year, month, day, departure time, arrival time, origin, destination from flights, and it would give you the same thing. Um, anyways, so that's the select statement. And then another thing with the select statement, this is probably handy. SQL does have this capacity as well. So you're using a select statement and you're also sort of like um, doing like a little bit of searching specifically for something that starts with dep. Um, so Select columns that start with depth from the from the flights data set. So let's do this. Okay. And then we get um, this. Okay. So this would be if you're interested in primarily departure, which is depth. And then this would give you like the data columns that are named for departures um, in case you forgot them or something. So that's kind of handy to be able to do. Um, yeah. 
view the first couple rows, okay, which is just redone with what I just did. I said, okay. Um, so that's kind of a nice little thing to have these little like starts with. There's a couple other of these too. I'm not super familiar with them, but there's a couple little like neat little helper sort of function things that you can stick in the select function. Um, and they'll they'll help you like find certain things, particularly in like a really big data set. I can see that could be kind of useful. Okay. So next we have the filter function, which is part of dplyr. Um, and the filter function is just that. It's filtering stuff. Um, I To me, filtering is like an Excel when you filter and you're not like subsetting. This filter function actually kind of is subsetting. So it's not just changing the view. Well, if you just did this, I don't know what it would do if I just did this. What does it do? Okay, so if you just filter, then it's not creating a data set. But if you filter and then store it, um, it is. So, but the filter function literally does exactly that. You use it to subgroup things, and you just want to look at origin equals JFK. And so you filter it, and these are all the ones that originated at JFK. Um, except you can't see JFK on here because you want to do a glimpse because it has 19 columns and you can't see them all. Um, which is another good reason to do this, which is store it in a database and then do a glimpse. Okay. So now you see that these are all origin JFK. Okay. And then it's filtered the flights data to just give the ones that started at JFK, which is, I think, in New York City. I don't know where airports are. I don't fly very much. Um, okay. So next we can do something similar, but this one here, now we're getting like fancy. So now we can filter, but we can also filter by carrier and origin and if the departure delay is like a certain greater than whatnot. So you can use the filter function for multiple filters um, and is of course just the ampersand and then just basic logic. Um, you know, you might goof up your syntax a little bit. It's pretty easy to decipher that and figure it out. Okay, so this is doing like a multi-filter and then a glimpse of that. And then this here is, um, I have no idea what DL is, but that's like the airline. And then the origin's JFK. And these are all ones that have like a departure delay of like 60 minutes or longer, which is kind of a long departure delay, I think. Okay. So that's what functions select and filter do. Okay. Um, again, you know, you can sort of think that this is kind of looking and smelling like SQL and what SQL can do because that's exactly what it's redundant with. Um, next is the arrange function, and this is essentially SQL's version of order by. Um, so arrange flights by departure time. This will take the flights data and it will, or it, um, by default, it does it in ascending order. Um, so we run this and then view the first ones. And these should all have like, um, if you think about it, the lowest values for departure time should be zero. Um, are they? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, departure time one. I don't know exactly what that does, to tell you the truth. I don't know much about airplanes. Um, so this is sorting by departure time, and they're all ones on top. I don't know what that means. Um, but that is what function arrange does. And we can also arrange by um, arrival time descending. And similarly, look at the head function on this. And we get um, arrival time descending. Um, 2,400, that's like 60 hours. I don't know exactly what that means, but we're using, it's just to teach you how to use the arrange function. And by default, the arrange function does ascending. If you want descending, you have to wrap it in descending um, to get descending. Okay. The mutate function will create new variables. Okay. So, you can actually create new variables in SQL, by the way, by doing like select this variable plus this variable as. And so that essentially is the mutate function. I used to do that all the time. Um, view the structure of the flights data set. So this is to look at the variables again. So here's the structure of the data set with function str. Gives you this. Um, this is, I think this is part of the tidy versus well. It's kind of handy because it gives you like, um, sort of like a really, really simplistic data dictionary really quickly. 
Um, the point here is that what we want to do is create a new column total delay. And so we have um, like departure delay and arrival delay is somewhere, I believe. Um, there's another oh, arrival delay. Yeah. And so these are both numeric just to kind of look at and make sure they're in the right form. And then let's create another variable that says total delay. So function mutate, I'm feeding in the flights data, and then I'm creating this variable here, total delay equals the sum of these. And that's a good way to make a nice new variable. There's other ways to make new variables too, but um, that's a way to sort of like just make a new variable. Um, yeah, and so run it and then function mutate sort of takes care of the dirty work and sticks it in this new, um, flights underlying mutated. I could just put this in flights and just overwrite it with a new variable in, but I didn't do that. That's not too dirty a thing to do because you're adding a variable. So it's not, um, you're not like messing up your original data. So here we have this, but it doesn't do me any good to look at it this way because there's 19, now there's 20 variables and I can't see my new variable. Um, so I actually want to do a glimpse to look at this thing. And I do a glimpse and here we go. So I have my new variable, total delay. Okay. And this is going to be the sum of the um, departure delay plus the arrival delay. So for the first one, it has two minutes here and 11 here and then 13 total. Um, so you can get delayed like going up and going down. Um, and you can get all kinds of delays. Um, I don't know, what is an arrival delay? I guess you arrive late. Yeah, I guess you arrive late. I don't. I mean, departure delay means like you don't take off on time. Arrival delay means you don't arrive on time, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really into airplanes or flights. Okay. And then we have function summarize. Now, function summarize um, does aggregate functionality. It's kind of handy. It's sort of like what pivot tables and what what SQL and what other functions will do. Um, there's a lot of ways to summarize and aggregate data because it's an important and useful thing to do. Um, so what this is doing is it's creating summary statistics and I had to code in what I wanted it to do. Um, total flights is just N, which um, that will give you the number of, of rows um, in the data set. And then the average distance, use function mean distance, the maximum delay, the maximum departure delay, the minimum delay, the minimum departure delay, the average delay, the mean departure delay, um, and then the um, number of canceled flights, okay, which um, in a, this is actually, if the departure time is missing, it's assumed the flight is canceled. So that's how that's working. So this is literally creating a little summary statistics data set um, that's more customized. I mean, a lot of the stuff you can do with other summary functions, but this is just like something super customized because you want these particular things. Okay. And so here we go. And we get a very, very simple um, summary statistics table with the total flights, which is an awful lot, um, 336,000. The average distance, um, notice that we get a lot of missings in here. And so because of that, it doesn't actually calculate a lot of the stuff that we want, which is kind of a bummer. So now what we can actually do is simply do this NA remove equals true. Um, this is a common thing in R to get rid of your missings. And then it will calculate things with just, um, with these removed. And so you'll get actual values here instead of just an NA. Um, so rerunning this essentially the same thing and then getting summary stats. If I specify that NA um, equals true, or NA, NA dot remove, that's what NA period MR stands for, um, then it will remove those from that calculation and then um, you'll get that value. Now, as a little caution here though, um, notice that the total flights is still the same. So what it's doing is it's selectively removing like each of these fields and so it could actually be the case that of the 30, 336,776 total flights, that there's only like 20 of them that were actually calculated here because maybe like there's so many missings. So you have to be a little cautious about like your sort of missing removal aggregate data analysis um, in general. So that's one reason to like know your data. And you should actually run... I'm not going to do it, but you should actually run like a missing data report so you have an idea of like how many values are actually missing before you start doing statistics on stuff and removing the missing because you could be doing statistics on only a very, very small percentage of the data 
if you have a lot of missings, and that's just not a good thing to do. Um, anyways, so that's what that's some of the stuff you can do with some of the tidyverse um, basic functionality. And then we have a group by, I mean, no, sorry, the dplyr functionality. Um, this particular function summarize, notice also that it's spelled with an S. Okay. Um, it's really just another function for doing aggregate data analysis. Okay. And then last but not least, the very last demo thing I'm going to do is group by. And group by literally does exactly that. This is exactly what SQL does. You can do group by whatever. Um, remember that your group by, of course, has to be some type of categorical variable. So you might have to change things around. Um, if you have something like we saw an example where we had like store IDs, those were original numeric. You have to change those and make those to be factors um, for group by to work. So, yeah. So let's do a group by and let's group flights by carrier. Okay. Now this. Glimpse that I can't actually look at it like this. Um, this is why function function glimpse I actually like. I don't like everything in the tidyverse, but I like the glimpse function. Um, the group flights. Okay. Sorry, my little fingers are not super like onion skilled anymore. I'm trying to hit. Okay. I know. I know. Here's your little ending parenthesis thing. Bracket thing. Um. I'm getting old. My fingers do not work as well. Okay. So here's our group by. All right. And I group by carrier. So carrier is here. Okay. Now what I want to do is create some summary statistics on the group data. So using the group data, I'm going to do summary stats and then um, group by. And then what it's going to do, this is going to do the average departure delay by carrier. Okay. That's what this is going to do. And then I'm going to get this and I print it and I get this. So here are the different carriers and here's the average. And also the, um, it also did the total flights, which is this right here. And so that is a nice, that's kind of a nice little aggregate data, handy way to do that. Um, cool. So that is our demo for exercise 20. And you have a parallel exercise on Canvas to do. And then this is the last exercise of the course that I hope you enjoyed doing.